You're listening to Broke Man Radio Worldwide, home of the champions, where you can be broke and still be classy. It is a beautiful Sunday morning edition. So good to have you here. And I'll say this, if you didn't make it to church, never fear. The Bible is so near. You know, a lot of people um, today, they got their favorite preachers. They got their favorite motivational scriptures and things they go by and you can really start following these people and they're good people there's bad people there's people that appear to be good and they're bad so really truthfully a lot of people get really sidelined when somebody that they really look up to does something really stupid but you know I'm not making an example of anything I'm just saying is I have been disappointed in my life with some of the people that I thought really truthfully were men and women of God. But then again, we're all human and we're set to fail one another. So today, and I'm speaking for me, and I always want you to feel that way when you listen to Broke Man Radio, that this is not a knockdown session. This is a let's build each other up session. So, you know, we have to look to that, look to God, and look to him to be the authority, the teacher, everything for us. Jesus is the way, the truth. And you have to be able to find that yourself through prayer and uh, by reading the Bible. And my thoughts are is, you know, I can fool everyone in the world with great Facebook posts and all these other things. People around the world can be believing that things are going well, well, well. And all of a sudden, really truthfully, deep inside, you're falling apart and you're having a bad day. But you're posting up like you're having a great day because you don't want no one to know your true inner feelings. Some days you're more you're more worried about things you shouldn't be. And then you're not really falling into prayer and not really leaning on anyone as for telling them to pray for you, but instead you're trying to deal with it yourself. Let me let, let me tell you where dealing with it yourself gets you. Like I always like to pick on myself here and stay drunk for 20 something years, just steadily couldn't make it, couldn't make it. Rehab after rehab after rehab. It became the, you know, the norm to wind up drunk in jail. Okay, if they couldn't find me at the rehab, they find me at the jail. And luckily, you know, because I got this big scar on my arm for where I blacked out, ran through an intersection, and crashed. And like to bled to death. So that, that's a reminder. I look down at that and go, whoops, I like to have lost my arm thanks to some wonderful surgeons years ago. That I did not. But almost bled to death in that one. So, with that said, we can we can fool the world by you know the smiles and all these things but truthfully honestly the only way you're going to find real peace in yourself and in your the deep part of yourself is to be close to god because if you try this on your own like i did years ago you're going to fail the only way you're going to get this thing right is by having the help you need and that help is god and let me tell you let me tell you jesus hung on a cross he died for your sins. If you read the Bible, you'll follow everything that I'm trying to say to you. If someone just comes up to you and say, yeah, Jesus died for your sins, you need to repent. Okay, you need to follow the whole story, Old Testament, New Testament, and see exactly what what transpired so that so many people are really convinced. And you can't get in front of God one day and be like, well, you know, I went to church, I followed everything I was supposed to, and I believe, I believe, and God just says, baloney, you did not believe, you were one of the biggest doubters of all this, you just, you just played the game, you don't want to be that, so, you know, I mean, everybody's going to heaven on social media, but honestly, it says in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 7, 13, 14. It's a narrow path to heaven, and we all can get that clear in our heads. And just to give you an idea of how short our life is, you know, the, the universe is so expansive, it's steadily expanding, and it would take billions upon billions of years to even get out of our universe. 
you know, and it's it doesn't be the light, but and it would just blow your mind. You gotta look at that sometime. But uh, God didn't intend for us to get out of our universe. God intended for us to see the beauty and the things and the hard work that He has done and orchestrated, so that we could enjoy that. But people can't even enjoy their own lives here on this simple planet. How do you expect to enjoy your life on anything else? So here we go. Life is really short, and eternity is forever. Now, you think about that for a minute. Let that dawn on you for a second. You know, that eternity versus our lifespan, man, is woof, uncomparable. So we live in a true sin in a time of sin and as king solomon wrote there is nothing new under the sun which you know honestly is true a lot of people say you know it's getting hotter it is a lot of people say this and that is so bad and all these you know the, all these movements that's going on everybody's like we've never seen this before and king solomon says mm, not true there was plenty of people doing plenty of bad things back then too so there's nothing new under the sun so the panic the uh, confusion all these things have been going on for years so there put that in its spot and uh, realize what's going on but to me to know there's 4,000 religions in the world that there's 37 million churches it seems like everybody should be going to heaven correct Mm, wrong but with Christianity Islam Buddhism Hinduism Judaism all these main big religions in the world you know Buddha never intended for there to be a such thing as Buddhism you know a lot of people don't realize that Buddha was not that guy matter of fact he was like look I'm just one of y'all that's what I've been trying to tell y'all the whole time most people don't follow things up good enough. They just say, oh, I'm going to follow Buddha. Buddha's like, mm, nah, that's not what I was trying to do. <laughs> In the Christian community, you had two billion followers. Now, that two billion, who's really following? That's up to you. And people's own personal, personal time with God. But as we, we revert back to the Bible again, as out of those two billion followers, what is a small percentage that actually is really in it for God. And, um, you know, it's just reality. Galatians, oh man, the book of Galatians is so awesome. You need to get in the Bible because it's got the fruits of the Spirit in chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, and long-suffering. I'll tell you, it always talks in the Bible it gives you a list of things, you know, of um, basically, you know, characteristics of um, what we should be living for and what, how we should be living our lives. In Galatians chapter 5, with the fruits of the Spirit, these are things that people are going to see from you. People are going to see these things from you and go, wow, this guy here actually is different than the rest of us. And that's what we're looking for is to be different and not be transformed by this world, but to be different than this world. So here on Broke Man Radio, you know, I told you a long time ago, you know, went to seminary, did all these things. And I've seen a lot of people in my time preach some wonderful sermons. And I've heard the best sermons you probably could hear at the camp meetings. But to be honest with you, there is no sermon that's going to compare to God's word the word of god nothing compares now if you want to keep posting up these things of inspiration and not living them then you're really truthfully just wasting your time you know you're wasting your time you're i mean you really truthfully you know you've got your mom your dad your brother whoever else fool but you're not fooling god so with that said well read the bible once you do the things it's going to take now, if you're wanting to be with God, you're going to have to know about God. Hmm. It sounds like I'm kind of getting on something here, but the fruits of the Spirit are, are wonderful. Kindness. Are you showing kindness and goodness? Faithfulness in your relationships. Faithfulness to God. Being able to say no. Absolutely not. 
you know, for me, it's always been a hard thing to say no and go, ah, not for me because I don't want to hurt someone's feelings. Let me tell you something. If you're going to live a good, a godly life, you're going to hurt a lot of feelings. You're going to hurt a bunch of feelings <laughs> because this world here don't understand what's going on in that B-I-B-L-E. Here we go. Now let's shut that alarm there down. So with love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. My dad's always harping on this one with me. Um, it's usually the last one. Self-control. Self-control. Being able to say, you know, actually no. And being able to do the right thing when most people aren't doing the right thing. Can you be that one person out of a group of people? Because like I said, the Bible is not a liar. And there'll be few people that are actually going to make it. I want to me and you there's listening everybody in the world to be you know a part of that small percentage but in all reality and truth like you have got to want it you've got to want to be with god and you're going to have to do the work it takes in reading the bible and prayer and getting close to god this has been broke man radio worldwide you know maybe you're seeing why now possibly i started broke man radio because I love all you guys out there. And I would love to see you in heaven one day. And as an old friend of mine said, he passed away years ago, but he sort of loved to watch him on PBS. And keep looking up. <laughs> Much love here from the BMR.